A lot of fucking people like to criticize the fact that I never say anything positive about NASCAR races. In fact, a lot of people are pretty fucking triggered by this fact. You know what? Normally I'd go like, here's your positivity, but to be honest, I feel like we do need a little bit of positivity in our lives right now. So you know what I'm gonna do? Here's a brand new series for after races. Not the day that the race happened, but like in the days after, where I'm just gonna be like, what was good that happened in this week's race? Because everyone's a fucking critic. Picked a good fucking week to start this series because this was without a doubt one of the worst plate races ever. That's pretty sad, but um, there were a few things that were good. Spencer Gallagher won. Well, I'm, I'm, I, I, I still sit back and I'm just like, how did this happen? Is this some sort of alternate reality? Are we sure it was the 23 that crossed the line first? Can we get some camera guys out there? Can we get, can we get like, can we get some confirmation of this? Because it still don't seem real. Why is this a good thing, you may ask? Well, hopefully this energizes GMS into developing a cup organization because you know that they're going to shove Spencer Gallagher in that. But GMS has really got a lot of developmental talent in their grasp. They used to have Kaz Grollo, who's not that good to be honest, but uh, hey, what you going to do? I mean, they used to have developmental talent. And then they, and then they left. Here's something positive about the race. It happened. Therefore, it's next week. And you know what happens next week? This fucking man right here is gonna be on track on Friday. If that's not a positive thing, I don't know what is. Kurt Busch is continuing to show speed. It may not mean much at a place like Talladega, but the fact that Kurt Busch is remaining to show speed, that means that all hope is that he can win some races this year and secure a spot at least somewhere in the Cup Series next year. The last thing that I want to see is Kurt Busch pushed out for mediocrity. That's happened so many times. Jamie McMurray. Well, I, technically Brad Kozlowski because his 2010 season wasn't that good, but it turns out he actually is good, so that one really doesn't count, but at the time it looked like that. AJ Allmendinger for the same team. Same damn team, by the way. You could even say he was pushed out of furniture row for mediocrity, but to be honest, if, if I had the option to go to Stuart Haas, even when it was just in its infancy, I would probably take it. Ryan Newman is still alive, following a plate race. This is always a good thing, because whenever we head to these plate races, you're never sure if Ryan Newman is finally going to run out of remaining neck and snap his head directly off his shoulders in a flying, crazy crash, because that tends to be what happens to him at these plate races. The strange thing about it, though, is that he has a three-race top ten streak in plate races ever since Talladega in the fall of last year. I don't know when this started happening, since when was Ryan Newman a ringer at the plate races? Never. That's when. The manufacturers continue to appear to be pretty relatively even as far as raw speed is concerned. Now I know that the cars are set up massively differently across even individual cars on across the same team. but. You can tell that in the uh, qualifying order, there weren't very many Chevys up there, but they've been slow all season. There was a decent mixture of Toyotas and Fords up in the top 10 in qualifying. That's good to see. I like when things are competitive. They haven't been this year, but I like it when they are. I didn't notice any severe issues regarding the pit guns on pit road this week. I guess mandating the nitrogen usage may have improved something. Hopefully that's the case and we don't see too much stupidity for the remainder of the season. It certainly didn't help Truex last week, but what you gonna fucking do, I guess? Jamie McMurray is continuing to be a human wrecking ball. Hopefully this means that he'll be out of the car relatively soon and we'll see John Hunter Nemechek in one of the 
ganassi of cars in the cup series at some point i don't want jamie mcmurray to go away forever his mediocrity throughout his entire career has led to some very interesting moments especially the entire 2010 season but it's a strange thing whenever jamie mcmurray shows up at the scene on a new team he kind of starts being competitive straight out the gate he did it as and he did it in his second start he goes to victory lane immediately when he went over to roush he showed a little bit of competition and then won at daytona and then in 2010 when he went back to ganassi he won three races. I wonder where he could go next and maybe duplicate that kind of success. Chase Elliott still hasn't won. Even at what is supposedly one of Hendrick's best tracks, even though they've only gone to victory lane there once in the last five years, Chase Elliott continues to prove that he is good enough for second. But you see, the problem with Chase Elliott, and I should have mentioned this last week, but everyone seems to be extremely triggered about the fact that he finished second again. You know, if I was a Chase Elliott fan, even though I desperately want that first win, I would take that second place at Richmond in stride. He did not even have a top five car in that race, and the fact that he was able to get second was remarkable. Don't know why everyone was so triggered about that, but hey, such is life. Ty Dillon continues to prove that he's an absolute fucking waste of space. Even in one of the easiest scenarios to get a top 10, he was in that top pack. At the very end, making moves, if he'd just stayed in line in the, in the bottom spot and let everyone go by him on the outside, he probably would have gotten a top 10. But this is Ty Dillon we're talking about. When Trevor Bain hit the wall, so went his career. That was pretty much his last opportunity to go to victory lane. If he somehow finds a way to win Dover, I will actually jump off of a bridge. No. No, I'm not going to say that because it's going to fucking happen and people are going to act like I was serious just now. So I'm going to retract that statement. All this means is that when Matt Kenseth gets into the car and hopefully starts putting up some respectable top 15 finishes, it shows that Trevor Bain was rushed to cup. And he should have just stayed in Xfinity where he was actually half decent and looked like a pretty decent, decent prospect. He only spent two full seasons in the series, and that was when it was leech infested. The, it, it, if anything, he really needed to be kept down there when there weren't too many leeches and all that good stuff. But the point is, at the end of the day, Trevor Bain's cup career is pretty much in its swan song. Paul Menard got a stage win. It's a plate track, but still. Paul Menard getting a stage win wasn't exactly what I expected to see out of this race. But you see, the thing is, Paul Menard's really confused me this season. He's had decent runs. He's had a few top tens here and there, and a lot of them on merit. But a lot of these races, he just hasn't had that speed that Ryan Blaney had last year. And I know it's probably because Ryan Blaney's actually, you know, a top five talent in the Cup Series. But I was, I was thinking that Paul Menard would probably be sticking his nose in there a little bit more and maybe going about, you know, maybe three positions better of an average finish. Some of his accidents have been stupid and out of his control, like the one that just took place at Talladega. But still, I was really expecting more out of Paul Menard this season. I don't know why. Saying, that it, saying it out loud really doesn't make sense, but you know what? It's what I expected. What you gonna do? Truex continues his search for a top 30. No, he doesn't! He got 26th! Oh, yes! Now his quest for a top 20 begin. In the last four races, Matt DiBenedetto has three top 20s. In the last four races, Martin Truex Jr. has one top 20. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Joey Gase actually looked decently strong in the Xfinity race at Talladega. He was up in the top 10 on merit for a while, not because of the strange pit strategies near the end, but actually in like, I think it was the second stage, I want to say. It, it was initially confusing why, even with sponsor dollars involved, he was put into the double zero for the Talladega race this year. But when he was up there and actually being competitive for a while, it actually started to make sense. So good on Joey Gase for actually being competitive for once. I guess technically Arca's a part of NASCAR now, so I may as well talk about that while we're here. Joe Graff Jr. He's kind of a wrecking ball. Throughout the entire Arca race, he was a part of or in the background of pretty much every single incident. And then he somehow managed to finish second in a photo finish. I mean, it's Arca. I understand that much. But 
If anyone deserved to win the stupidity that was that Talladega Arca race, it was Joe Grack Jr. for being an absolute wrecking ball and a half. I know this video is titled What Was Good About the Talladega Weekend, but I have to bring up the fact that James Hilton and his son passed away in a car accident. Now I really don't understand the significance of James Hilton's impact in NASCAR, because I really wasn't even watching or have been paying attention to my history class courses in NASCAR when it comes to James Hilton. All I know is that he was extremely competitive in that one um, Daytona duel, it was, when he was like 72, but hey. What you gonna do? So there you have it. That's gonna be the positives to take away from Talladega. I don't know if I'm gonna do this every week because I'm going back home from college and I don't know how much of an opportunity I'm gonna have to record over this summer. But if we see more of this series, you know for a fact that it's gonna be full of motherfucking positivity because God damn it, if I'm not a positive individual. So thank you for watching and experiencing this along with me. See you next time. Have a fucking good one, y'all. You can just be like, oh, like a fucking banshee. The video just ends immediately. It knows. It knows. Oh, God. Oh, it's so bad. Why? Why would I do this? Why would I allow this to exist? <laughs>